CCM is holding our third annual Representation Matters two-day training in collaboration with the Campaign School at Yale University on February 25th and March 4th. In just the first two years, we have seen hundreds of interested individuals get the tools to help them on their journey to local elected office or service on a border commission. This week, we are joined by Patty Russo, the director of the Campaign School, and Karen Duval Walton of the Housing Authority of the City of New Haven to talk about why representation matters to them. If you want to register for Representation Matters, our free virtual two-day training is open to everyone. Visit us at ccmcares.com for more information. We'd like to thank our sponsors at Gateway Community College and Housatonic Community College. The Municipal Voice is a Connecticut Conference of Municipalities podcast in collaboration with WNHH LP 103.5 FM. I'm your host, Matt Ford. As always, be sure to give us a like and let us know what you're thinking in the comments. CCM's Municipal Voice podcast continues to present a key forum on important state local issues. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect consensus views of CCM or member municipal leaders. Patty, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here, Matt. This is our third year working together on Representation Matters, um, and you've been our trusty partner throughout. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about the campaign school at Yale? Sure. So I have been the uh, lucky executive director of the campaign school at Yale for about 15 years now. Uh, we were founded right after that first year of the woman, 1992, Matt. Mm -hmm. And you may recall if you were born at that time that um, I was in high school. So many women that were running for Congress, both mm -hmm. on the Democratic and Republican side nationally. It was so exciting. Um, and the majority of the women that were running that year won. Yeah. So many of us who have been active, actively involved politically, you know, especially on the on the front of getting more women in the pipeline and getting them mm -hmm. elected, we're really feeling excited. You know, it's like, wow, we have finally smashed that glass ceiling. And now yeah. as a result of all these women running and winning, we're going to see all these women saying, hey, why not me? Why mm -hmm. not me? Except we didn't. So 1993 was very flat. And so yeah. our founder, a woman by the name of Andre Allian Brooks from Westport, Connecticut, uh, got a group of us together, Rosa DeLauro, a former Congresswoman, um, Nancy Johnson, you, mm -hmm. you may recall from the 5th Congressional District. Um, myself, I was uh, head of the Permanent Commission on the Status of Women at the time, and just a whole group of women leaders to talk about what is it going to take to get more women mm -hmm. in the pipeline in a really thoughtful, conscientious way. And so we started brainstorming. We started meeting and talking about our dream campaign school, mm -hmm. right? We we knew we wanted it to be issue neutral, nonpartisan. We knew we wanted to mimic the energy of a true political campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew we wanted to attract the best in the business. And the best way to do that is to, to be housed at, at, at Yale. So fortunately, mm -hmm. We went marching over to uh, then Dean Guido Calabresi's office at the mm -hmm. law school and made our pitch. And um, he said, gosh, this sounds amazing. I'll mm -hmm. give you one year. And that was 28 years ago. Okay. So, so, with so the, pandemic, the group of you came to Yale. Yale didn't. Yes, we went. We Rosa, Rosa went in and Nancy Johnson. And, you know, those of us who know Rosa, right? She mm -hmm. represents yep. um, New Haven, the third congressional district. You know, well, it's easier to say yes to Rosa DeLauro than to say no. <laughs> so he said yes. And he said, I'll give you one year. And that was that was um, that was 28 years ago. So our first class was in 1994. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we had the little thing called the pandemic, Matt, that kind of got in the way. But so the first year of the pandemic, we offered free online campaign training to anyone Mm -hmm. Anyone who found themselves in the unfortunate predicament of running for public office mm -hmm. in the middle of a pandemic. Who knew, who knew how to do that? Yeah. Right. So it was our way of paying it forward. Mm -hmm. And then the last two years, we've been able to offer our five day intensive live online. So mm -hmm. we knew we had we had connected with the right candidates when we found 80 students who thought, Four days of 12 hour, four, yeah, four days of 12 hour days and one day of an eight hour day was their idea of a good time, right? He's a special kind uh, of person, are, yeah. Exactly. So we are thrilled that this year 
uh, we are back at the law school. We're back on campus. We're so excited to welcome our class, um, our 28th class um, of the Campaign School at Yale on, on the Yale Law School campus the mm -hmm. week of June 12th to the 16th. Excellent. I want to talk a minute about our evolution because I think it speaks so well about mm -hmm. our So yeah, as you said, how, initially how we were focused, got to this point. Yeah. You were aimed at, at women candidates, as you said, but then exactly. you're saying with, with so, the, the pandemic is when you shifted to helping other kind of underrepresented historically communities. Is we that... have always. So here's my here's our story. So okay. back in 1994, which was first class, mm -hmm. the majority of the women who attended our, our program at that time were white women. Mm -hmm. Matt, predominantly white women in their mid 40s. So they had launched their kids. They had always been politically active. And mm -hmm. it's like, now's my turn, you know? Yeah. And so that's when they decided to either come because they were interested in running for office or come because they were interested in campaign management, because that mm -hmm. is another program that we offer. The program is really for uh, women interested in running for office and women mm -hmm. interested in, in campaign management because we don't have enough women in either venues yeah. right other other ways fast forward to last year so just little by little about 15 years ago we started to see more and more women of color attending our school mm -hmm. and so right now last year the median age of a woman attending our school is i don't know 30 31 mm -hmm. and the majority of the women who attend our school are women of color and we're really proud of that matt you know what yeah. that doesn't just happen right mm -hmm. Um, women of color have found a happy home at our school. Uh, our number one resource uh, of um, students are other women of color who are grads of our school. I'm mm -hmm. um, saying this place is amazing. You know, you yeah. will be well trained and you will be taken care of. So we, you know, the culture is as important. The culture we create is as important mm -hmm. as the training. Uh, so that's kind of, that's a snapshot. Uh, yeah. Three years ago, we changed our name from the Women's Campaign School at Yale mm -hmm. to the Campaign School at Yale because we started getting more and more calls from non-binary individuals mm -hmm. who wanted to attend the school and from men who are like, hey, I need to come to your school. I'm running a campaign for a woman. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that there are challenges that women face that I have no idea about. I need mm -hmm. to be well prepared. And so while we've always, you know, we don't discriminate, we've always accepted uh, non-binary non-binary individuals and, mm -hmm. and men. Um uh the 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 name change makes us more open and welcoming. Yeah. However, our mission remains the same, which mm -hmm. is to increase the number of women in the political pipeline. So if mm -hmm. you're about that, apply. <laughs> That's a good pitch. I like that one. So as you said, you've been at this for a while and, and mostly historically aimed at women. And over th these, you know, 20, oh, eight, going on, oh, coming up on 30 years here, you've had some pretty notable alumni. Um, can you give us a couple of, of stories of some of the, the famous people that have come through your doors? Just amazing, amazing individuals. And we're so proud of, of the way in which they lead in the world. And, you know, I love it when people start talking about a grad and I say, she's one of ours. She's yeah. ours. Oh, that's ours. She's ours. <laughs> um, of course, let's start right right in our hometown of New Haven, Connecticut. Um, former Mayor Tony Hart, who mm -hmm. became the first uh, woman of color female to ever serve as mayor um, in the city, mm -hmm. is one of our grads. Uh, Caroline Simmons, who's um, mayor of Stanford, Connecticut, yep. one of the largest cities in our state, mm -hmm. is one of ours. First female. Again, first is, there's a trend here you'll see, Matt. First yeah. female. Shantae Hanks, who's deputy commissioner uh, for the um, for housing department. Ned Lamont grabbed her, right? The governor mm -hmm. saw that talent and said, hey, I need her up in Hartford. She's one of our grads. Wendy Tyson Wood of Waterbury is the new president of the NAACP there. Mm -hmm. First woman uh, to um, to be the head of the NAACP on the national level. So we have women serving and leading at all levels, mm -hmm. local, state and federal. Yeah. I want to talk about Lauren Underwood. Lauren okay. Underwood uh, from Illinois uh, came to our school in 2014. 
-hmm. And she said, Patty, you're going to see me one day. I am going to run for office. Now, she didn't realize it was going to be so soon uh, after she graduated from our school. But the opportunity presented itself, Matt. Mm -hmm. So she called me one day in 2017 and said, I'm running. I'm running for I'm running for Congress. Now, her district, which is Illinois 14, is a predominantly white district. Mm -hmm. Um, And but she was determined. She got into a primary, a Democratic primary with six or seven white men. Mm -hmm. And she worked and worked and worked. And of course, she had been trained by us. So she knew what she was doing. And she blew it out of the water. She won big. She won that primary big. And then she went on to win the general election, unseating a 20 year incumbent Mm -hmm. on the Republican side. She then became, as a result of that uh, success, she became the first um, African-American female, um, to, of course, to serve in that district, but mm-hmm. also was the youngest African-American woman ever elected to Congress. Oh, that's very cool. We're so proud of her. And now she's in leadership um, mm-hmm. on the Demo- in the Democratic caucus. Excellent. That's very cool. And I, I think when hearing you talk about all these, you know, first, you know, the first women in these positions, it, it's interesting because, you know, why why is this program important? Because, you know, so many of these people are the first to do it. So they don't necessarily have someone to follow their, their example for locally that's already done it. So the training can help them to become the first. Absolutely. It, it's not, very the cool last, not the last, not, not the last, not the but, first. <laughs> so it's pretty clear that, you know, an individual can find the tools to success from the campaign school. You know, you've been doing this for a while now. Can you kind of tell when someone has it, the, you know, the certain it factor and when someone doesn't? Or, you know, can anyone learn these skills? Uh, I think um, anyone can learn these skills. I really mm-hmm. do. You have to have a passion for politics. If you don't have a passion for it, mm-hmm. it's so hard. It's so hard when you do have a passion, Matt. Mm-hmm. When you do have the skills, when you do have the network, it's hard enough. Mm-hmm. But I can pretty much I've been doing this for a long time now and mm-hmm. I love it. I can pretty much tell when mm-hmm. somebody walks into my office to, to have coffee with me, mm-hmm. the way in which they present themselves, if this is a good idea for them right now. Mm-hmm. It may not be. It may not be. But we can always help them uh, talk about what they need to do to prepare for a run. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a, a variety of different things that you can do to to prepare to, for a run. Back yeah. in 2017, after Donald Trump was elected, you may recall the the March on Washington, right? Mm-hmm. The, inch, the really global uh, march at that mm-hmm. time. And at that time, there were so many women calling us excited. They had gone to the march. We started getting all these calls Mm -hmm. um, at the school. I'm mad. I marched. I want to run run for office. When's Mm -hmm. your next class? Right. So I was my idea of a good time on a Sunday is to return those kinds of calls, Matt. I was so excited. And so I started returning those calls and they went something like this. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm from Ohio and I'm mad. I marched. I want to run for office call me back. And I called her back. And I said, Hi, Anna, where are you registered to vote in Ohio? Oh, I'm not registered to vote. You're not registered to vote. No, I'm not. But I'm mad. I'm mad now. Well, Anna, you're not coming to the school. I'm going to save you the $65 application fee. You are not coming. I'm going to tell you where to register to vote. And then I'm going to give you a local political homework assignment. And uh, you're either going to be inspired and excited and energized by that or not. So Mm -hmm. a third of the women who reached out to us after that March, Matt, Mm -hmm. weren't registered to vote. The second Mm -hmm. third were registered to vote, but didn't vote in the presidential that year because, quote, the two candidates were so similar, I couldn't make up my mind. Mm -hmm. So two thirds of those who had reached out to us after that March were not ready for a five day intensive with us. But they were ready for a one day intensive. And that's where you and I come in with CCM. Mm-hmm. That's when we created the Campaign School at Yale The Basics, which is a one-day intensive. And mm-hmm. so my whole thing about the one-day training is, if you have a newly discovered passion for politics, mm-hmm. join us. If you want to run for office someday, you think, join us. Mm-hmm. If you want to be want to work on a campaign, 
join us. If you want to learn how to be a more effective leader on an issue you feel passionately about in your community, join mm -hmm. us so that people can see there are a variety of different paths to leadership. Yeah. You just need to choose one. Yeah. And that's a good point, I think, is that, you know, for people who are thinking about maybe coming, that you don't necessarily have to want to run for mayor or for a selectman right. of your town or senator or whatever. You could be interested in helping a campaign or being on a, a board or a committee or something like that. So there's a lot of right. different ways. Um, there's not think, one path. And that's what's so great mm -hmm. about the one day two. I have a phenomenal group of our grads who are coming this year on February 25th. Mm -hmm. Um, for, as part of a panel discussion and yeah. one is on the board of education and um, uh, others are, are city council people. So they're all uh, representing um, their individual constituencies on the local level, which mm -hmm. is the focus this year for our training. Over the past couple of years doing this program together, uh, one thing that we've kind of heard come up a few times um, in talking to you know people that have run campaigns and, and stuff is uh, fundraising knocking on doors, making calls for appeals for support, which is certainly something that's intimidating. It might make it difficult for some people, you know, even people who might potentially be really good politicians. Mm -hmm. Is there any way around fundraising? No, there is not. No. You know, everyone that I know is for campaign finance reform. Everyone mm -hmm. who uh, is, you know, talk to any of our members of Congress in Connecticut, our U.S. senators, everybody's for campaign finance reform. Mm -hmm. But until we have it, Matt, everyone has to achieve a level of comfort and confidence fundraising. It's mm -hmm. just the reality when you run for office. Now, again, it's a technique. It's a skill. And mm -hmm. that's something we're definitely going to be talking about on, on Saturday, February 25th. How do you mm -hmm. put the fun in fundraising? How how do you shift your energy so it's not drudgery and mm -hmm. you're not you're not fearful? Right? What kinds of ways can I inspire others to invest in my candidacy? Mm -hmm. Right? To make a difference in our community. Um, it's really all about language. Yeah how you frame it, how you think about it, and how you put mm -hmm. yourself out there. You know, I'll say to women, you're not you're not looking for money so that you can go to St. Bart's for two weeks. Yeah. You're looking for make an investment in our community. Here's my vision. Here's my vision for our community. I want to make it better. Will yeah. you partner with me? Right. Will you lead with me? Mm -hmm. That's very compelling language, isn't it, Matt? Don't yeah, you definitely. want to? Yeah, if you're coming at it from the angle of I, I want to serve my community and I need your help to, in order to do that, not mm -hmm. give me money, but give mm -hmm. our our cause, yeah. our yeah, whatever our money. community, yeah. make an yeah. investment to make it better. It's pretty heady stuff. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. The Representation Matters program that we work on together is aimed at communities of color. We want to make sure that people know it's open to everyone to you know learn, listen, uh, attend. But for our communities of color, for women, um, they haven't had access to the same tools, resources that white men have historically. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that there has, hasn't been uh, qualified people from these communities. How much does the electorate have to change? Uh, they have to change, you know, and, and it is changing. You know, it's not as change. It's not changing as quickly as we'd like, Matt. Mm -hmm. You know, Connecticut is the land of steady habits. Yeah. Right. So things things move slowly, but we're definitely see, uh, seeing a shift. Look mm -hmm. at all the women that we have on the state level who are serving as uh, our constitutionals, right? Yeah. Uh, Susan Bysowitz, Stephanie Thomas. I mean, how exciting is that, right? Yeah. Um, more and more women as, as serving as state senators and state reps. It's happening. It's mm -hmm. just not happening as quickly as we would like it to be. So that's yeah. why these trainings, these opportunities are so important and so critical. Um, let me think about it. Let me just put my toe in the water. Let me just go to a training, mm -hmm. not make a commitment, just kind of see where maybe I would have the opportunity to lead in my community. That's why it's so important. Our structure, our political structure was not made for women and people of color mm -hmm. to succeed, Matt. Our structure was made for white men to succeed. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They've done really well. Now we're seeing more and more uh, white people, uh, women and men, 
wanting to serve as partners and allies mm -hmm. to our uh, people of color who are running for office. And that just, I, I think, helps to make a world of difference. You know, mm -hmm. this is not, it, it's got to be a collaborative effort in order yeah. to be successful and effective. Lauren Underwood is a perfect example yeah. of that. She had to turn to her allies and partners in her district because there are so few people of color in her district. Yeah. And just getting the message out there that representation and increasing diversity doesn't just benefit those communities, but benefits all of us. It benefits everyone. You know, it benefits everyone. It lifts everybody up. That's what's so exciting about the work is yeah. to see it, you know, to see how effective that the process has been. Yeah. And we talk about the excitement, you know, we, we've, we've mentioned how hard it can be intimidating that it maybe is not for everyone. These are, you know, pretty heady topics. But do you get a sense that some of the people taking your class um, and representation matters or your other classes are having fun? They're having a blast. I, I try to make it fun. I like having a good time, Matt. Believe me, I, you know, I, I don't shy away from doing hard things. But if it wasn't fun, I wouldn't be doing it. It is so much fun. I love it. So the Monday of class, um, mm -hmm. our five day, I'll say to our, our students now, they're coming from all over the country and the world. Mm -hmm. uh, they're meeting each other for the first time. They're at Yale Law School. Uh, those of you who have, have been seated at Yale Law School just know how you feel when you're at L Yale Law School. Mm -hmm. you're, being, you're being trained by the best and the brightest in our country, both on the Democratic and Republican side. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting. And so I will say to our students that Monday morning that by Wednesday, they're not going to recognize themselves just by, the, by virtue of having this experience. They'll start feeling energized. They'll start feeling confident, more secure as a result of all of the, the training that they're receiving, the experiences of sharing stories with other students, yeah. right? Um, we had an uh, amazing moment that I'd love to share back in 2019, mm -hmm. which was the last time we were at Yale yeah, Law School. So there was a uh, student from downtown Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. talking about voter suppression in her community, how mm -hmm. on election day, the voting machines don't work, the lines out the door, and then at the stroke of seven o'clock, the doors close and you can't vote. And there was another student from Alpharetta, Georgia, which is a very mm -hmm. different you know, community uh, right, uh, right outside of Atlanta, who mm -hmm. said, gee, I, I've never had that experience on election day in Alpharetta. All mm -hmm. of our machines work. We get people through the line pretty quickly. I don't know what you're talking about. And so the yeah. woman, the student from Atlanta, invited the student from Alpharetta to join mm -hmm. her in her district on election day. Mm -hmm. And so now that student from Alpharetta has become a phenomenal ally and effective spokesperson on behalf of, wow, not everything is equal. Yeah, my experience is my experience. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's the same experience for others. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of amazing connection that we create for our students at our school. Yeah, the connections, the empathy for others. It's it's exactly. all exactly exactly. The other thing that we offer to our to our students long after the five days, they have an amazing mm -hmm. time. But long after the five days, we are a phone call a Zoom, a meeting away from our students. You know, the political climate has gotten pretty mean-spirited, mm -hmm. but our students know that we are always a phone call away. Patty, I'm yeah. having a crazy day on, um, you know, in my district uh, campaigning. Uh, I need 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we are the safety net for our, our, um, for our grads because it's just gotten really, really tough out there. Yeah. And the majority of our students, I want to say, this cycle, they won. They ran and they won. So we're really proud of our track record. I think that the way in which we serve mm -hmm. they, uh, is everything. And I think that this is the way in which you can be prepared to serve effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the business of politics has gotten very complicated, Matt, and very yeah. expensive right? Why mm -hmm. not skew yourself for success? Why not um, learn 
how to um, how to effectively run a campaign, effectively run for office, prepare for a run for office, prepare mm-hmm. to lead on an issue that's going on in your in your uh, community that you feel passionately mm-hmm. about. Why not do that? You know, everything is political in life. I love it when people say to me, oh, Patty, it's so great. You're so political. Mm-hmm. Not me. And I just think they're missing out because everything in life is political. Yeah. Your work, uh, negotiating with your kids and your spouse, everything is political. So why not make it work to your advantage? That's what I do. <laughs> this year, um, like the first year, this is our third year, we're focusing uh, specifically kind of on running for local office, municipal uh, you know, mm-hmm. offices, boards, that kind of stuff. Um, last year, we focused a little bit more on some state politics stuff to kind of coincide with the election cycles. We're all looking forward to it. And the first day is going to be February 25th, right? Coming up. And also, of course, day two will be on March 4th. And they can also find out about some of that at ccm-ct.org. Well, Patty Russo with the Campaign School at Yale University, thank you so much for speaking with us today. We My always pleasure, like talking Matt. to you, and we're looking My forward pleasure. to another great, you know, representation. Matters. It's going to be phenomenal. I mean, yeah. it, it's just amazing. We've got it down, and everyone is, you know, talking it up already, which has really mm-hmm. been exciting. I can't tell you how many emails and calls I've gotten about February 25th and March 4th. So it's all good. You are listening to the Municipal Voice on WNHH 103.5 FM. Desea un cambio en su pueblo o ciudad? Representar a la comunidad es importante y todos merecen una oportunidad. CCM and the Campaign School in Yale están organizando Representation Matters, una sesión gratis el 25 de febrero y el 4 de marzo. Para registrarse, visite hoy ccmcares.com. Karen, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Good to have you, as always. Um, so last time we had you on the show uh, back in September, it was before the election. And, uh, you know, due to your many hats, we talked about things like affordable housing, we talked about education. And one thing we touched on a little bit back then was uh, representation in government and some of the issues we have in Connecticut with, with that and uh, other kind of equity issues. Um, so we've asked you back today in advance of a program that we're doing. We've done it for the past two years and we're doing it again this year called uh, Representation Matters, which is a program we're doing with the Campaign School at Yale, which seeks to open doors to uh, people in communities of color um, with giving them the know-how on how to run for office. As someone of an expert in this topic, you've run some hard-fought races over the years. What motivates you to run for office? Oh, I am so happy to be able to talk about the representation matters um, and the, the series of sessions because I do agree it's so so important. Um, and I got into public service in general because of a real calling to um, serve my community in ways that um, started around um, city government and then mm-hmm. moved into working directly on housing and just seeing um, up close and personal, the power that government has in in decisions that impact people's everyday lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and I laugh every time I hear somebody sort of say, oh, I don't do politics because um, the work that politics um, governs and dictates and decides uh, is important in everything that we do. And so I jumped in um, in public policy in general and then more specifically as a candidate jumped in because I wanted to make sure that the voices of the people that I had been serving so many years was really heard and was really at the forefront when decisions were made about Mm -hmm. housing policy, education, um, or how we're creating opportunities for for communities to build wealth and families to build wealth or or any of the number of things Mm -hmm. that government can have an impact on. What does representative government look like and what does it mean to you? Absolutely, Um, fundamentally, Representation um, only happens when our government is connected to and reflects the voice of the people who are being served. And certainly that means that we have to have represented um, officials who um, look like the racial and gender breakdown, the ethnicity breakdown, the wealth um, distribution, um, that we have people who are able-bodied and differently abled, um, uh, that we have folks really represent the fullness of what this this um, state of Connecticut really really is um, in terms of people's homes. So uh, representation um, matters because I think 
you can't represent folks whose issues you don't understand. Um, representation matters because those who are most impacted by things should have the most say in what the good solutions are and, and the ability to, to um, propose and, and enact solutions to those. Uh, and I think we see the failure when we don't have representative government um, in terms of the ability to meet the needs of all people. And so, so many things have brought greater awareness in this moment when we sit in 2023 about why we need to have representation in the in the things that our kids are taught in school, why we need to have representation and how we decide where people can live and what kind of housing can be built, why it's important that we have representation when, when decisions of safety and uh, criminal justice reform are being made, um, why it was important when the cannabis industry was being launched to have representative voices about how that's going to happen and, and where those proceeds are going to make an impact and, um, and who's going to have an opportunity to be part of that industry. Um, all of these things um, Connecticut residents have a have a, um, a vested interest in getting right. Um, and I think getting right means that we have to make sure that all the voices are at the table um, in order for us to get these things right. You are someone who has you know heard that calling and seen the importance of it and gone into uh, government. How do you think we get more individuals of color into public service? Do you think that people, you know, need a push to run or they just need, you know, the, the right tools and keys available to them to make a successful run? Or is it, you know, a little bit of both? I was going to say, can I take all, all of the above <laughs> as the choice? Um, I do think that we need we need to see more and more people in there um, modeling, modeling that this can be done and that it's something that, that folks um, can see themselves doing. Right. You have to be able to to see yourself in something that, to have that dream of it being for for you. So we absolutely have to work really hard to make sure that there are people in there who are modeling. Um, and then I think we have to be thinking really about what are the, the, the barriers or the things that get in the way of somebody of somebody running and create those pathways. Mm -hmm. um, this partnership, CCM and the, the campaign school is a great opportunity uh, to bring the kind of information that people need to, to run, help them think about what those barriers are and to build a support network. Because I think it's having models, having um, the right tools in place and access to the resources, building the right relationships. And then I think you have to do it in community with other people who are gonna mm -hmm. speak your name, uh, speak your name in rooms that you're not even in, um, yeah. encourage you, give you guidance. And I think that's another thing that the sort of cohort model of a campaign school really brings uh, brings to the forefront is that that you need to do this with some other folks who are gonna, who've been a little farther down the path, who's mm -hmm. got some wisdom and experience and folks who are gonna wanna be in it with you um, uh, as they take their first steps also. Yeah, they think that they can take it together and some of those connections I'm sure farther down the line would pay some dividends. You know, the more we diversify who volunteers on campaigns, who gets hired to work in those entry level campaign roles. Um, and I think we'll recognize that those are all, that, that's the feeder system. Mm -hmm. um, and that that is the system into the paid jobs. Um, we need diversity in who are uh, uh, the effective campaign managers and field directors and organizers in campaigns. Um, we need to diversify who's doing the communication. It's a whole industry, yeah. right? Folks that do communications on campaigns and polling on campaigns. Uh, I think the more we diversify that and get people to see that the real possibility for fulfilling um, work and, and jobs in that, it mm -hmm. also gets you on the inner circle where you start to rub elbows with these folks who are the candidate and you start to see, gee, that could be me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there's a, a way in which if you're sort of not interacting with folks who thrown their hat in the ring to run for office, it feels very far away. It feels like they're sort of a different breed of person when yeah. you actually interact and can see, oh, geez, this is somebody just like me who for some reason got called to 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 want to take on this role and worked really hard at mm -hmm. it. And like that could be me, too. Um, and yeah. I could be running a campaign. I could be the, the finance director on a campaign. Yeah. I could be doing communications on a campaign. I could do field organizing, and maybe, uh, maybe you also get that call that I could be the the candidate that all those folks are working for. Yeah, like today's interns and volunteers, you know, can see that you know the the senator or the local politician isn't just a person on TV; they're a person doing a job, and that that could be them in the future, just by virtue of being absolutely. around it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Exposure, absolutely. and also the flip side that those young people, you know, when pe other people in charge think in the future of. Who do I know? 
the young and involved, the, those are the people that are going to think of just by them being in, involved, even at the, the kind of entry level. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think when you've got a diverse set of voices at the table, um, when the policy decisions are being made around a campaign, I think you get a, a more robust policy agenda, one that is potentially more reflective of the needs of the community. So mm -hmm. it really, I mean, the benefits of really thinking beyond um, a sort of narrow, narrow scope of sort of who's right for these jobs and, and mm -hmm. roles will benefit us in the kinds of public policy that gets passed. Um, in the in the um, in the laws that get passed in our in our state, and ensure that we're doing things that actually can can drive us forward as a state to be the most inclusive place, um, the place where people feel real opportunity, um, the place where families want to be, um, raise their children, grow old. Um, all these things are important to Connecticut growing as a as a state and and being the place that we really want to be. Um, so I think that representation matters is a huge part of that. You are listening to the Municipal Voice on WNHH 103.5 FM. So you've been at this for a little while now uh, in public life and just active in general. Um, does it feel like more doors are open in 2023 than maybe in 2003 or 2013? I do see real progress. Um, I see um, for so many reasons. Um, uh, conversations happening around equity that really weren't happening in 2003 in the same sort of um, mainstream way that you see them happening now. Um, and I think the, you know, the, the nation and the world going through the, the COVID pandemic was a piece mm -hmm. of that, um, where um, in, in lots of ways, um, the inequities were just laid bare in front of people. Um, Folks who maybe never thought they had to struggle or think about certain issues actually had to think about mm -hmm. them. And I think that that opened up some things um, in the midst of a, of a health pandemic that impacted the, the entire world. Um, we also also had real racial reckoning um, in this country that I think put equity issues on the on the uh, front burner in ways that um, for, for many of us in the community, they've been front burner for us all along, but I think it, it centered it for other people in a way that hadn't happened. Um, and so the conversations I hear people having um, today are much more mainstream than they were, I think, 10 years ago. Um, the way in which um, uh, uh, local electeds are thinking about, about um, equity and inclusion, corporations are thinking about it, nonprofits are thinking about it. Um, I do think that that's a different set of conversations than we've had mm -hmm. before. Um, and I think it's our challenge and our call in this moment to make sure that it's not just a moment of conversation, yeah. um, but that it be it re be reflected in sustained change. And that's where I think policymakers and, and, and electeds have a real role. Um, you know, the work that folks like Senator Gary Winfield led um, in the session right, right um, following um, the horrendous murder of George Floyd and um, and and so many others um, mm -hmm. as well um, led to change on the books of the laws in this state um, around um, policing, mm -hmm. and that's that's a way in which you take something from just being a moment of heightened awareness and emotion, and you take it into sustained change that yeah. actually can be felt um, in every community in this state. And I think that's what we have to do in in this moment is make sure that the things that uh, many of us felt called. Um, mm -hmm. during the pandemic or because of the racial reckoning um, around um, uh, around police policing and police brutality and, and many other inequities results in real change public policy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's why I hope that um, folks who feel really um, engaged in this moment think about all the ways they can volunteer and get involved in a nonprofit or give money to right causes, but also think about ways in which they might want to be an elected mm -hmm. official or want to support elected officials, because I do believe we can make real sustained change in this moment um, if we keep at it. And the fear is if we don't, that we'll fall back into old ways um, and think back as, remember that moment in 2022, 2023, where there mm -hmm. was, you know, awareness and it'll be sort of looked back on as, a, as opposed to being able to talk about it as, as a moment of real sustained change. One of the things that we do at Representation Matters is we have local officials who have you know gone through elections and are working like yourself and others. Um, 
give advice and and kind of pull back the veil as it were on on service and what actually goes into it kind of the nuts and bolts and that you know it's not all easy and it's not all just winning that one election so obviously when we talked to you last it was before an election and you were running um in that last election and you didn't win how do you deal with you know not winning and you know picking yourself up after that and do yourself see yourself running again in the future so how do you deal with that? Um, I think you, that, you know, my way of dealing with um, any time that I've had something that I've really thrown myself into and thought was the thing that I wanted more than anything, and then it didn't work out in that way, is to try to step back from it um, and hold on to something that just sustains me through through most things in my life, which mm-hmm. is to believe that things come together in the way that they're supposed to, even when mm-hmm. I can't sort of see in, in the moment. And so my getting out there and, and, and running, um, although it didn't result in me being elected in that particular election, mm-hmm. um, did, did, did have, have impacts in, in terms of the kinds of things that I was able to talk about, mm-hmm. um, in terms of the, the, um, the new folks that listened to my voice and, and, you know, and said, wow, let me think a little bit differently. Um, and that now have invited me to the table to talk about things whether it's around housing policy or education mm-hmm. policy or things. So um, I think you have to, in, in the moment of, of, of a loss, I think you have to sit back and reflect on all the lessons learned from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you have to sit back and think about sort of why, like why was this placed in my path at this moment um, mm-hmm. in life? And what am I supposed to do with it? And for me, um, it's been um, a real reflection on, okay, so in this moment where I've got an opportunity, I've got some people's attention, This Mm -hmm. is a moment to really think about how am I making sure that people are making good housing policy decisions and how Mm -hmm. are we thinking about providing public education in the state in the best possible ways. And I can do that whether I'm an elected official or not. Um, And so I think I would encourage people, um, even in that moment of of, um, of what might feel like rejection, Mm -hmm. to think about how to use it um, to continue fighting for the things that um, drove you to get involved in the beginning. And um, and so as long as I stay centered on that, I think I think that's important. Um, I also think, though, that the opportunity um, presents a whole lot of opportunity for soul searching and to think about mm-hmm. um, is is this um, something that I would go all in again? Um, and I think you should take the time to, to think about that um, coming off of an election and do that reflection and take stock and maybe not in the immediate days because the immediate yeah. days you just want to rest. <laughs> but once you've gotten yourself a little bit of time um, to really t- do that soul searching and think about, you know, would you, would you do it again? Um, and I don't have an answer for you on that uh, at this moment because so much of politics um, and, uh, and elected office is also, you know, uh, what opportunities um, present and where mm. um, that candidate is personally at that moment. Um, so I don't say no to anything. I don't close uh, close doors. I think that um, what I can tell you and commit, I will always be working toward is how to make Connecticut um, the most inclusive and the strongest um, um, possible um, place for, for families to want to, to live, raise their children, great, grow old. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and I'll, I'll certainly be in the, in the struggles with folks on, on making sure that we're moving the needle forward on that. Yeah. Um, whether that's elected or not elected ways. So running has, it sounds like it has value, you know, the process of going through that had, has value to you in your life as a public servant, whether or not you ended up winning that election, that that process of meeting the people, talking about the issues, you know, was educational and, and uh, changing for you. Life changing. I, I can't say, you know, I, I believe that there are people who from little, little childhood uh, looked at elected office and said, that's going to be me one day. I, mm-hmm. I believe they exist out there. That was not me. Um, and so I that is this is not necessarily a life course that I could have anticipated I was going to be on. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not trade it for a moment that I that I put myself out there, um, talked about the things I wanted to talk about met incredible people and you know i was running in a statewide election so incredible people all over the state um saw corners of the state um and and just amazing amazing things all across our state um and and i i wouldn't trade that for anything yeah, i think a worthwhile it was wonderful. experience regardless of the outcome yeah absolutely that said you know people thinking about wanting to get into this 
um, I do think need to take real stock about about whether it's right for them at that mm -hmm. that moment. It is an all in kind of endeavor if you want to take it seriously and and want to have a real shot at winning. And so it is all consuming. Um, and you know, if you're if you're somebody who like I am, I actually care about um, people and what mm -hmm. people uh, think and say. You gotta you know toughen your skin and um, and be be willing to sort of tune out some of the noise that's out there and stay very focused on why you're in it, and what you're doing. I encourage people to surround themselves with people who are going to tell them the truth um, and who are going to um, also be their soft spot to land and, and encouragement in the moments when it's frustrating. Um, and, 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 you know, find, find yourself the right team of folks who know what they're doing and can advise and, and, uh, and then you gotta be all in, yeah. um, and you gotta want to, you know, eat, sleep, um, and, and, you know, breathe and, and, and everything, at, um, for, for that time. Um, and I think if you do that and you keep yourself focused on why you're doing it and what's important, um, I think there'll be a lot of good lessons to learn, um, out of that uh, at, at the end of the day and hopefully you'll be successful. Great. Well, Karen, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Um, we certainly appreciate it. And hopefully, uh, hearing some of your stories has inspired someone to maybe come to representation matters and get involved in public life themselves. I hope they will. Absolutely. I hope they do. We'd like to thank our guests, Patty Russo and Karen Dubois Walton. We'd like to thank our sponsors at Gateway Community College and Housatonic Community College. Learn more at gatewayct.edu and housatonic.edu. The Municipal Voice is a co-production by CCM and WNHH, 103.5 FM. Kevin Maloney is our executive producer, Christopher Gilson is our producer, Harry Draws is on the boards, and I'm Matt Ford, your host. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and give us a like, and watch out for our CCM chat series on our YouTube page. America was founded on the principle of representative government, but communities of color are marginalized in this process. If you're interested in running for office or serving on a local board or commission, the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities and the Campaign School at Yale are hosting Representation Matters, a free remote two-day training session with informative workshops and panels of experts to give you the tools to make this a reality. Visit ccmcares.com for info on how to register.